Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about this. Um, this is the Elite Spanker Tactical Series. Um, it's a basically a one day backpack that fits directly on a plate carrier. And I like this idea because for most situations you're really only going to need about a day's worth of stuff and you're going to go back to your house or your home or back from the range of LARPing, you know, your full day or whatever. Um, so you aren't going to need a whole bunch of stuff. You're basically just going to need food, water, medical equipment, whatever you keep on your normal plate here to begin with, and then a few other things. So obviously it's all going to be mission specific. So if you're in a military unit, you're police, law enforcement, whatever, everything you carry on you is going to be slightly different. Um, versus just say somebody who's civilian, they just want this kind of as a, you know, just in case kind of setup. Um, but I'm going to go over what I have in mind specifically, and you can set up yours differently again, depending on what your needs are. This is just what I have, so this isn't necessarily a how-to video, but it's maybe just to give you some ideas what you could do with this pack. But it's mainly a review of the backpack itself, which I'm actually very impressed with. Um, there are a lot of other options out there, but again, this thing was 50 bucks for actual multicam, so it does match. It's not some weird, funky, off-brand. It is actual multicam. If you want to get a solid uh, OD or an FDE or like a tan, I don't remember what they call it. They also have a black. If you get any of those solid color versions are only $30. So that is incredibly cheap for my opinion, what you get, which is actually pretty decent quality. I would say quality wise, they're probably on par uh, with most Condor things. I would say maybe even slightly better, um, at least with this specific version, the, uh, the Molly straps are actually a pretty rigid material versus on most Condor things that you get. Um, it's kind of this material here just folded over itself and sewn down. So this is actual rigid material, which is pretty nice. So that Molly is going to be tougher than, say, your average Condor stuff. So that's pretty nice. You can see right here, here's AR500s, and it's basically the exact same material. And the stitching on it, as you can tell, is really well done. Um, so some things I keep on mind, just again, to give you some ideas. I keep an extra tourniquet here. I have another tourniquet um, on my battle belt it's on my t-rex arms med kit there's a little loops on the bottom that it goes on so i have one there and i have this one that's out of the way i can actually reach this with both hands so that's why it's there that's why it's on the edge i can reach around and grab it because i'm relatively flexible i can reach around and grab that or if um, you have a buddy that needs to be doing medical equipment on you it's mainly why it's there easy access for them i also have a decompression needle because just to show you that you could fit one there if you're going for you know ultra stealth or whatever you can throw this thing on the inside of the backpack not a big deal so you could use this back panel itself as a IFAC if you wanted, since technically your IFAC is for someone else to use on you. Um, but it's also nice to be able to access it in case for some reason you can't, so which is why I have this rip away. But you could use this as a larger medical bag um, for whatever reason. Say you're the team medic or something, you could use it for that specifically. Um, I threw some glow sticks on there. You could have IR sticks if you want, if you need those for whatever your application is. It's just to show you things you could do with it. I also have a couple of the D-ring clips on here um, because stuff breaks often, so it's nice to have a couple redundancies to be able to fix things and be able to hook stuff on if you need to, which is why I also have some large zip ties there. In theory, you could use those to handcuff people, but they're not exactly the best for doing that, but in a pinch, they're better than nothing. And I also have one of these uh, smoke grenades. I forgot it's sport, tactical smoke that makes this thing. It's a uh, sport smoke. It's who makes this, but I actually wrap mine in a Ziploc bag because I doubt they're waterproof. So a Ziploc bag will at least keep the rain off of it. Uh, it's not going to keep water out if you get submerged or whatever. But so that's just something you can keep on there. And again, this is more for a buddy to grab, not for myself. I have one of these on my belt as well. Um, I tend to try to overpack stuff. So <laughs> this is probably like the third attempt I've done. And my buddy Rhett has also kind of gone through this and basically told, "Hey, you need to take this stuff out and this stuff out," because I tend to again overpack stuff. So. Don't overpack your equipment to where you weigh so much that you can't move around. You need to be mobile. And that's kind of what this is intended for. So this has three different packs uh, or zipper compartments. Um, the first one is the main compartment right here, which is a zipper. The smaller one right here is also a zipper. The third one's right here is actually Velcro. So if you open it up, you can see in here I have, if you can see that, there is a hydration bladder. This is a Camelback. I think it's a three liter one. Fits in there perfectly. Uh, it has a little tie offs where you can tie it. It also has little strings on either side, so if you have a weird hydration bladder, um, it'll fit in there just fine. And then I have the hydration bladder hose coming out the side. So that keeps that in place. Um, you could utilize that for something else if for some reason you um, are weird and you're a camel and you don't need a lot of water. But the vast majority of people, especially live in the south or a hot environment, you're going to want lots of water. So having this, if nothing else, as a hydration pack um, is extremely nice. And one thing I'll say over other hydration packs, if you can see down here, 
it doesn't stick out past the bottom of the play carrier, but like maybe an inch. That's about it. So uh, versus other backpacks and things I've seen out there, this thing actually stays um, pretty in line with your plate carrier itself, so it doesn't interfere with, say, if you have a, a war belt, battle belt, whatever you want to call it, um, on your system. It doesn't get in the way, so I can flex in all different directions and this doesn't rub or get caught on anything. So the height wise is excellent. Um, it also stays really secure. It's attached on the back by Molly. Um, one criticism, and I'll show you this once I take this thing off, is the Molly st strap on the back is more flexible. Uh, it doesn't have that rigid, I don't know if there's plastic on the side of the straps, but uh, normally Molly is, you know, you can't really bend it super easily, but this one, it's literally just cloth or the nylon webbing itself. So there's no rigidness to it. So it makes it really easy to put it on your Molly, but it makes it a little bit, I don't know, flimsier, cheaper, less secure, I guess. But that said, it goes through probably eight Molly straps before it actually connects on itself. So, I mean, it's not going anywhere, but that's just a note. And I'll show you that in a little bit. But, all right, so you saw the hydration bladder. Now, for the main compartment, what I have in here, one is a poncho. Now, if you live in a really dry environment and it's not going to rain, you know it's not going to rain, you don't need this. But, I mean, you could use this as a shelter as well to sleep in at night, whatever. And it weighs almost nothing. So, got a poncho. Um, I have my NVG mount. This is the Rhino. I think it's the two mounts, one with dovetails. Anyways, so I have a Rhino mount in there to attach my NVGs to. I also have my NVGs in here. Uh, this is actually a goggle case that's padded, so I just put the NVGs in there because it takes up less space than a lot of other things I've seen. So if you have a goggle case like that, you can utilize it for that. Um, let's see. I also have an MRE. Uh, this one is the Chicken Chunks White. This one is better tasting than some of the others. Throw one in here that you actually like or will eat if you use this. I mean, you could throw a mountain house or whatever else you want in here, but then you're gonna have to have um, boiled water or you know be able to boil water, which in this specific case, I don't have the ability to do so, So, which is why I threw that in there. And a larger pack, which I have, and maybe I'll cover in a future video, I have a lot more of the survival long-term type stuff, so it's more of a three-day pack. But for this, I just wanted one MRE, um, because again, this is really just designed for like an eight hour, 16 hour shift kind of thing. And if you're doing a bunch of hiking stuff, you can always throw more in here. Cause I got more room. I could throw an MR another MRE if I wanted to in there. But for this one, I just have one in there all the time. So that's all I have in the main compartment. Again, it'll expand pretty big. If you can see it's got quite a bit of space in there. So on the inside of the small compartment, I have a bunch of goodies in here. So first of all, I have a nasal airway. So that's right there. It has a lubrication on there too so and again a lot of the medical stuff if you don't know how to use it it's still a good idea to have it just because someone else might know how to use it so i have a pretty good idea i know how to use that but i have a pretty good idea about how using the decompression needle which i've never actually used one in real life so it'd be kind of one of those trial and error things i guess but again someone else might have uh, the necessary training to be able to use that i also have one of these sawyer minis and i keep everything as a block bag just because it's easier and it doesn't go flopping around all over the place you could organize this better than I do. I just kind of tend to throw stuff in there, but it has some organization. But I also have a little squeeze bottle, and I'll show you why in a second. So here's my water filtration if I need it. Um, again, you might have enough water. It holds three liters if you're really thirsty. So I have maps. Uh, they're laminated to my specific area. Um, again, you need maps because if you're going to make any sort of... Uh, I don't want to say tactics or plans or, you know, whatever. But if, you, if you're working in a squad or a group or whatever, you need to relay to people like what's going on around you or things you see or just make plans there if you need to move around or whatever you need to be able to have maps so you can at least show people what you're talking about and to kind of go along with that you're going to want um, some markers so if you need to do land navigation now granted for a one day pack you're not going that far so which is why I just have a map of my local area in here and if I need something for larger areas then I can use a GPS or something um, I have what I call a repair kit um, it's just duct tape um, some extra rubber bands, the UV resistant bands, Ranger bands, and a couple of large and small zip ties because stuff breaks and that weighs basically nothing. So why not have it in there in case your belt or whatever takes a dump and you need to fix it. So this is what I was talking about with the Sawyer Mini. This is just a little adapter, it costs like $8 on Amazon. You can see um, you attach these parts to the Sawyer Mini to the bottle. Once um, you attach the Sawyer Mini to the bottle, which is the filter, then you attach this to the end of that, and you can attach that to the end of here. So this is a Camelback standard bladder, and it has a quick little detached thing right here. So you pull this out, and you can use these little attachments to actually use that squirt bottle to force water back into your Camelback. 
that's filtered, and so you don't have to take your Camelback out of your backpack, and which is a huge pain, but you'd have to take out your plate carrier. You can just fill it up from the other end and just use pressure squeezing it to filter it through there. So I thought that was a really good idea. It works really well. So I thought that was kind of cool. You know, eight bucks, why not? Yeah, I mean, if you want to take out your plate carrier and boil water or whatever, because that's your system, I mean, that's fine too, but that's just a really way to, easy way to filter water and get filter water directly back into the Camelback without having to do a whole bunch. So this is just a cheap uh, Mylar blanket and it's very thin. I have thicker ones too, but I like this because it doesn't weigh a whole lot. It's not super durable. So, I mean, it's not gonna last more than one usage, but you could utilize this. And for some reason, if you get hypothermia or uh, someone gets shot, you can use them, keep them from getting cold. Uh, just kind of keep them warm. So you could use this for medical or you could use this for a more survival type, I guess, situation. But it's nice just to have one, um, even if you don't think you may not need it. Um, another thing, and I'll go over this a little bit, is wet ones. So one, um, hygiene is still important. Doesn't matter if you're out in the woods or you're doing whatever. You still need to keep as clean as you possibly can. Um, there's no reason to get infections that you don't need to or ingest bacteria or whatever that you don't need to. And it's just going to make your life rougher. So I don't just go drink stream water. Um, you boil it or filter it or whatever you can because there's no reason to be dumb. So wet ones, one you can use in for basic hygiene. You can take a shower with one of these things if you need to just to get clean. Or you could use them uh, to wipe with, to use the restroom. Another thing also under consideration, you might want to bring some toilet paper. So again, you can just kind of fold that up real small, just take a little bit. You don't need a whole lot for a day or you shouldn't. If you do, you got problems. Um, you could also take baby wipes if you want to. Uh, so, again, more wet ones because why not? Don't want anything. Well, another thing in here I have is cordage, which is not necessarily, again, this isn't a survival bag. So this is just a El Cheapo um, little bracelet that I have. And it's got, you know, probably 25 feet of uh, paracord on it. So that's useful for that. It also has this little flint starter right there, which you can see doesn't work super well, but it does work. So in theory, I could start a fire with that. Um, it also has a whistle on there. But again, I just use it mainly for the paracord and it keeps it nice and tight. Extra Ziploc bags because you never know when you're gonna need waterproof things because this is not waterproof. So a couple of things people don't think about. One, well, people think about, but stormproof batches are nice. Again, this is a one day pack. So this is pretty much all the fire starting you really need. Um, if you need more than this, then you should have taken the larger pack. Um, but this is enough to start a fire if you need to keep warm, you need to boil water. Again, I don't have a water container, so I couldn't in this situation. But if you did, matches. Bug spray. This is something that people probably don't consider a whole lot. And I don't know, maybe again, maybe I'm just a pansy. But I don't like being bit by bugs all day. And I live in the south where it's very muggy and wet pretty much most of the year. So we have giant size Arnold Schwarzenegger mosquitoes that are just around here all the time. And where I grew up, I'm not used to that. The mosquitoes are about half the size. So you absolutely want some bug spray. Um, this is just a little small thing I got from Walmart. It was like two or three dollars. It was pretty cheap. So this is enough to last you a couple days. Um, you don't want bugs, jiggers, all that kind of stuff. Again, just because you're doing, you know, manly things doesn't mean you can't um, take care of your yourself, you know, hygiene wise. And also, if you have to take a nap or something, you're not going to sleep if mosquitoes and bugs are biting you all night long. So that's just something to consider. Um, again, for fire starting options, I have one of these little fire start cubes. I, these are a box. Um, I got them from Walmart, $5 for like a box of 20 of these things. And they work really well. I'll test them out. Um, these are ibuprofen. And this is kind of just to show you what you may or may not consider for medication. Um, ibuprofen is good for pain, but it's also good for fever. It's good for a bunch of different stuff. Um, but you could throw a little bottle, a mixed bottle of different medications if you want, uh, like anti-diarrhea or whatever you wanted in there. Um, Tums if you get upset stomachs easily, whatever you need. But don't forget to include medical stuff when it comes to just basic pills. Because the last thing you want to be doing is going on whatever mission specific thing you want and you have just a huge headache or massive migraine or something. So ibuprofen, migraine headache, something's gonna make a big difference. Um, water purifying tablets. And again, you could use this directly in the Camelback if you wanted to. I would advise against it because you're going to get film and stuff built on the inside. Now, if you clean it out regularly, it's not a big issue. But I would prefer something like that Sawyer Mini. Now, this is just kind of a just-in-case scenario in case the Sawyer Mini fails. I like having two of everything. And these are just the tablets that make the iodine taste less bad. Last but not least is a compass. So. If you know how to do land navigation, um, you're going to want a compass. You're going to want, again, maps. 
over here, you're going to be able to mark on stuff. You want to be able to figure out exactly where you are. Buy a decent compass. This one is kind of an El Cheapo copy of a more, I guess, tested compass. But this thing works decent enough where you're going to be able to uh, navigate by it, especially if you're in an area you already know. And again, I'm not going out into the middle of the wilderness um, surviving for multiple days. This is a one day pack where I would be either on patrol or around a familiar area where I'm going to be. It's not a go out into the middle of the woods and survive. This is just whatever you might need for that specific day. And people tend to overpack, and again, I'm one of them. So a good advice is to have a buddy or somebody go through and just question everything you have in here and whether or not you need it. So for instance, if I knew it wasn't gonna rain, I'm not taking this. I could throw something else in there, an extra MRE or whatever else I wanted to. Or if I'm worried, uh, like if I know I'm not gonna be out at night, I'm only gonna come back you know, a couple hours later, I wouldn't bother taking the MVGs. So, Again, it's just something to consider. Um, I'm gonna pause the video here real quick and then I will take this off so you can kind of see what the back looks like so I can show you what I was talking about with the Molly. All right, so one thing I'm gonna show before I actually show you the back side is I wanted to go over and show you the zippers. Um, the zippers actually have little pull tabs here and they are YKK zippers, so they're pretty smooth. Um, it also, just so you can kind of see a rough measurement, um, the top of the backpack, is roughly three inches you probably can't see it right there but it's about three inches about how far it sticks out the bottom sticks out about four inches uh, up to maybe about five if you really stuff it but it slims um and fits your plate carrier pretty well it's almost the exact same size as the back panel of the plate carrier like i said it just is about an inch below maybe two inches below but i'm going to go ahead and insert some footage here so you can get a little bit closer of a view but I'm going to insert some footage here of uh, me just at the range doing a couple simple drills um, just so you can kind of see what it looks like um, on a plate carrier and kind of see how it does or doesn't interfere with whatever belt setup or helmet setup or whatever you have on you. So I'll go ahead and insert that now. Three. One. Eight, two, five, four, four, still a one. So I actually don't have to take this thing all the way out to show you what the back looks like. But you can see on here, it doesn't have full molly all the way across the back. It just has these little sections right here. And then it has this strap. Now the strap, like I said, it's folds on itself. It's, there's no hard plastic interior to keep it rigid like there is on most molly straps. So that's a plus and a minus. It's not as rigid, but it's also a lot easier to take on and off. Now one thing it doesn't have, and I'll say I, I actually installed these myself. These are little snaps. Uh, that I put on myself that does not come with those it only comes with this velcro and the velcro goes through and it loops around on itself and then it velcros to itself so it's not the most secure way of putting it on there which is why I put the snaps now granted once it's uh, the molly straps are through all the way like you can't pull it off anyways but I like stuff being a little bit more rigid so I already had these snaps for another project I did a while back so again if you can modify something to work better go for it so all I do is loop it around itself and then snap it on so I know it's not going anywhere but so that's one thing I wish they would do differently is this Velcro is dumb. Um, I don't understand why it keeps it in place and it keeps it out of the way. Sure. But Velcro over time wears out. So if you take this on and off a bunch of times, just put a snap on there. Surely it doesn't cost a whole lot. Didn't cost a whole lot for me. So one thing, uh, retrofit, I guess, or MacGyver that I would do is put snaps on here because it holds it on there a lot better. Um, but that's the back. You can kind of see, um, I don't really have any complaints with it because you don't need more Molly than this. So it makes it lighter weight. Um, the material on here, if I didn't talk about that earlier, the material is about the same kind of thickness as a uh, Condor would be. Here's the AR500. It's, I don't know if you can hear that, the difference. But um, this is a more durable material than this is. But it's, it's very similar to like the Condor type material is. But if you guys have any questions about this um, specifically, uh, feel free to ask or if you have any video ideas or anything, um, feel free to ask. I will try to uh, do as many as I can, but hopefully this helped you all out. And again, I highly recommend this pack for 
I mean, shoot, this one's 50 bucks. Uh, the cheaper ones are about 30 if you just want a solid color. But for the price, I don't know of a better backpack out there that attaches directly to a plate carrier. So um, if you like this kind of videos, just go ahead and give us a subscribe, a like, if you liked it. If not, then um, thanks for watching anyways, I guess. All right, have a good one, guys.